<coughs> All set. So I'm here, uh, it's me or not, uh, with uh, Benjamin Baxiera, working on the struggle for Amor is Justicia para Alex Nieto. Um, I'm also in the neighborhood of Ario where me and uh, all the mamas were evicted from gentrification. So I specifically have been working on this for a minute at uh, Prensa Pro Reform Magazine, because this should be already know is what's hitting for people, people of color. Could you talk a little bit about the role of gentrification in the way that things went down for us? Okay, so check this out. This this was the barrio in the past. No, nobody wanted to live around here because it was it was the boondocks. This is very far away from things, right? Sure. You know, so uh, uh, there are a few people here that I know from way back in the uh, 70s and the 80s that are here right now today that no longer live here. They cannot afford to live here, right? Houses that sold for thirty thousand dollars in the late 1970s are now inflated to $1.5 million. So, note what happened. Uh, uh, Alex Nieto was one of the last of the Mohicans, one of the last people of color down on Cortland Avenue. Cort Cortland was a barrio, you know, right? And, and we used to call it Barrio Grande Cortland Locos, right? And, and so he was one of the last families who was able to live there because they were under rent control. And uh, um, he would come up here all the time, though, right? He would come up here all the time. He would eat his burrito. He would look out at the view, smoke a couple of cigarettes. And uh, um, what happened that day is he scheduled for work in less than two hours. And uh, um, so he's not doing anything. He's just eating his uh, burrito. Uh, but he, for his work, he's a security guard. He has his licensed taser that he needs for work. Right? It's, it's a tough little joint down at uh, San Bruno Avenue called El Toro Restaurant and Bar, right? And so uh, uh, what, what happened was somebody saw him eating a burrito and saw what they thought was a gun, but it wasn't a gun, it was a taser. They called the cops on him. And why did they do that? We're talking about gentrification now, right? The point about the gentrification is this, is that... Those people have never had to have a security guard job. Huh? You know what I mean? Right? You know, so that, that is the reality of it, right? So they see that and then they see a Latino with what they think is a gun. And they've never even had to be around gang members. A gang member's not gonna have a holstered weapon. You know what I mean? Like a homie's gonna have it, you know, uh, under under their belt or something, right? It's gonna be hidden, right? But they see this and they get nervous. And they all start from what we know right now. This is gentrification in action, all right, Tiny? Check this out. They start gossiping about the guy up the block, who, uh, the guy up the hill who supposedly has a gun. They all start saying, oh, did you see the guy with the gun? Did you see the guy with the gun? And supposedly one man of reason says to them, yeah, he's eating a burrito. He's not doing yeah. anything, yeah. but then they all get all spooked and nervous, even though he's not doing anything, and they call the cops on him. They call the cops on him, and, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that is gentrification in action right there. And they come up here, and they come up hearing a Latino male in a red jacket, six foot tall, and... What we know now, because the officers' names have been released, one of those officers is a supposed gang expert. And so he hears that red uh, um, uh. Uh, jacket uh, description, and he's like, he's like, oh, that must be a gang member. Let's go, let's go kill the gang member. You know, that's the bad guy. That's the bad, let's go kill the bad guys up there, right? And, and you know, Alex has never been arrested in his life. Thank you. You know, and... Uh, uh, you know, then they come up here with that mentality and they kill them. And you know, it's to protect and serve. What? To protect? We're talking about gentrification here. Protect and serve the new people's interests. Property ownership. Property ownership. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's. Um, last point on that, I just want to say, um, as you, as a Rasa, you know, brother, a poet, um, you know, what would you say? to the community who's still here, who's holding on. Um, uh, behind this kind of race and class profiling, um, just words of resistance in terms of, you know, what does it mean to be gentrified yeah, yeah, people? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. Um, 
my, my, my suggestion and my advice to them is this, is all right, if, if you gotta go, man, look, look, uh, that, that may be inevitable, but while you're here, make your best to stay here. This is the center of power on the West Coast, one of the centers of power on Earth. You got resources here, you got community, you got culture, where they're shipping us off to after this place right now, off to Antioch, etc. And God bless those places, all right? But guess what? There are not as many resources out there. There's not, you know, great pay out there, right? You know, uh, um, there are people who are disenfranchised and confused and, and many times feeling as if they've lost their culture too now because they're out of the varios, out of the ghettos, right? Out of what the life that they've known for so long, right? So while they can be here, they've got to appreciate what they have. Go and know your city. Don't be a don't be afraid to be in your city. This is San Francisco. Go out to the avenues. Go out to the museum. Go out to the beach. Go out down the block. Go. This is your city. Let your presence be known in this city. You know, don't let's let's not hide anymore. Let's not hide. Yeah, so that's it for that. Gracias. All right.